Well, Hong Kong has a number of uh, major challenges uh, in terms of air pollution. First of all, Hong Kong is just a small city and we're in a much bigger region called the Pearl River Delta. The Pearl River Delta is one of the most economically active and productive regions in the world. So there's a lot of emissions, including our own emissions in Hong Kong. So the first thing is we're in a high emission area. Secondly is uh, if we're talking about people living in Hong Kong, then we suffer the highest risk at roadside uh, because it's important to also understand how the air pollution is impacting us. We're most worried when our health is directly impacted. So it's very important to understand that if we were able to reduce roadside air quality, this will have a substantial impact on the people of Hong Kong. And then thirdly, of course, is the uh, pollutants arising from big sources like power plants and uh, shipping. These are areas where if you work hard, you make the right investments, you can see substantial improvements. So the message is to understand your district, to understand where are your biggest health risk, and to also be confident that if you're willing to take important decisions, you can make a difference. I would suggest taking two approach at the same time. The first one is ozone in terms of volatile organic compounds. This is a very uh, complicated science. This is one of those problems where other parts of the world are also having problems controlling uh, ozone. It's a trouble because it's a kind of complex chemical uh, combination reaction to sunlight. The most important thing is to better understand what it is that you can do that can control these various pollutants better. This is, I think, one of the most exciting area of science. Whilst um, we have to acknowledge that this is an area where we don't have all the answers, what's important for Hong Kong to do is to make a commitment to really pay attention to VOCs and ozone and see how to control it much better going forward. I anticipate this is the problem uh, for Hong Kong and the whole of China, China for probably the next 10 years. So very exciting science and very important in terms of cleaning out our air quality. The second thing is, is to continue to focus at roadside. The uh, uh, pollutants coming from different types of vehicles, we need to understand why they're happening. We need to understand what it is that we're doing that needs more. So for example, one of the areas of concern in Hong Kong are our LPG taxis. We know from what happened before that the catalytic converter in the taxis need to be replaced every 18 months or so. And the government had actually spent quite a lot of money uh, in actually giving free catalytic converters to taxi owners to have them replaced. Well, you know, it's been about 18 months now, so I think the government has to look at, again, what they need to do next. Should we mandate regular changes of catalytic converters? And I suspect, again, uh, the science is very important to try and better understand where these higher emissions are coming from, whereas a year ago, the trend for uh, these pollutants, uh, except for VOC, uh, were going down.